All right, guys, let's get into this clip because I forgot about it. Shout out to, um, shout out to my friend on Twitter that, sh that pointed this out to me. Um, man, it's it's a it's, it's an interesting clip that the um, that Reggie Bullock during our media interviews. If you guys haven't been following the show for a little while, on media day, Isaac and I got to go to Mavericks media day. We got to sit down with almost every single player except every player except for Porzingis, basically, because of time, and have an interview with them. About seven between four and seven minutes, depending on which one. It's quick, and then they're they're rapid fire, so they're going through all these stations and things. We we were blessed to be one of the stations. We were really appreciative of it, and so we got to uh, to go ahead and interview Reggie Bullock, and this is how we interviewed Reggie Bullock. And this is a clip. Now, stop me if, if this sounds insane to you at the beginning of the season, but doesn't sound as insane to you right now. Listen to what Reggie said when we asked him, what are your goals for this season? What would you say a successful season is? Yeah. Second round, is it only title? How do you measure kind of success this year? Um, success this year is being a top 10 defense. Ooh, mm. I like that. Yeah, I like that one. Okay. That's success in making it out of the first round. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's good. A top 10 defense and getting out of the first round. Getting out of the first round, obvious. Obvious goal for everybody, right? That's obviously something that everybody would want to do, that every Ma Maverick player should say. That should be the goal for everybody. That should be the goal for literally every person in the franchise <laughs> is to get out of the first round. But the top 10 defense, I scoffed at that. I thought that was crazy because if you look back at the last couple of seasons for the Mavericks, that just didn't seem like a thing that they could do. It didn't seem like they had the personnel. You guys were, you know, I mean, you at home, you know, if you watch this team, you're like, there's, I mean, this team doesn't have the personnel to do what they want to do on defense. You look at last season, Dallas Mavericks finished the season with the 21st best offensive rate. They'd have to jump up 11 spots. They'd have to jump teams like the Celtics, the, you know, the, they'd have to jump a whole bunch of teams in there. To get to that spot, they'd have to take a big step forward. How were they going to take that big step forward? Especially Rick Carlisle, new, you know, leaving new coach, Jason Kidd. We didn't know what Jason Kidd was going to bring. Um, the season before that, the Mavericks finished with the 18th best defensive ratings. The Mavericks were going down. The Mavericks defensive rating was getting worse year over year the last couple of years. And so it just didn't seem like the Mavericks could finish as a solid top 10 team in defensive rating or a solid top 10 defensive team. The Mavericks are fourth right now. We are over halfway through the season, and the Mavericks are fourth, not just top ten. They are they are fourth. Fourth. That blew me away when I thought about it. And it was Matthew Nope that pointed out to me. Shout out to you, man. I thought he was crazy. I think I even said it on the podcast. I started looking through and trying to find the clips and say, man, I don't, I don't know about top 10 defensive, but it was a great goal. And and shout out to, you know, give props to Reggie Bullock because he was the veteran that came in. He was the guy that I think made a little bit of a change. He started that uh, that change because when he was brought in, it was another wing defender that was brought in. And then Sterling Brown, another wing defender that was brought in. And then Josh Green, another wing defender that was basically added to the rotation here over this last stretch. Because Jason Kidd, you know, wanted to push him out there, wanted to develop him a little bit more. And I was skeptical about that at the beginning of the season. I didn't see, you know, a lot of us thought that Josh Green wasn't showing enough, and so he wasn't getting any time. But then Jason Kidd started to play him, and now all of a sudden the Mavericks have all these wings. These last couple of years, you, you, if, you got, if you remember that Mavericks team that played the Clippers the first year, they were having Seth Curry guard Kawhi Leonard. They they had Maxi Kleba guard Kawhi Leonard, right? The Mavericks don't have to, they don't have that problem anymore. They have a couple guys they can throw at him. Now, maybe schematically they still throw Maxi Kleba on him for um for other reasons. And Kawhi probably won't be in the playoffs, but uh yeah, this team did not have the wings to be able to do the things they they still had Dorian, Tim, and then it was like Seth Curry, Delon Wright, Justin Jackson, Courtney Lee, who barely played. Ryan Brokoff, they brought in Michael Kidd Gilchrist at the end of the year, and we got excited about Michael Kidd Gilchrist. You got excited about Michael Kidd Gilchrist, and so did I. But the Mavericks brought in a bunch of wings, and I think that changed a lot. And Reggie Bullock has been part of a good defense before. Jason Kidd got the team to buy in to playing some defense. Give him credit. Give him credit. This is a positive world. It's a positive world. The Mavs defense is trending in a positive direction right now. 